here with Stella Assange. Good morning. Thank you to be here. Good yeah, morning. Here a very important event which has been uh, organized just to speak about the future of democracy. How do you see the future of democracy right now? Well, at the moment it's looking very dark. Um, Julian's incarceration and imprisonment for the past three and a half years are a sign of our times. Um, Julian embodies the principles of accountability and of democracy and um, he's in prison and I think we're all in prison as long as Julian's in prison um, and it bodes very badly for, for where things are going. I, I think that Julian's um, what's happened, been done to Julian over the past 12 years really tracks um, how we've descended into something that uh, we've lost democracy basically. It is meaningless to talk about democracy anymore. And what it is and where it's going is a question. Please give us the ultimate updates on the case. Well, um, in June, the UK Home Secretary uh, signed off on or pr approved of the extradition to the United States. In the UK, you can still appeal that decision, so Julian is trying to appeal that decision. But the reality is that Julian could be extradited within a matter of months. Uh, we hope that the High Court will hear the appeal, but they have no obligation to hear an appeal. So at the moment, we're waiting to hear back from the courts about whether and when an appeal hearing will be heard. And of course, the United Kingdom is trying to withdraw from the European Court of Human Rights system. So even the that avenue of appeal, which has always been kind of the, the last um, safe, safeguard uh, for for people who are who are um, you know having their rights abused within the uh, European Council of Europe uh, area, uh, the UK wants to withdraw from that system, and so Julian might not even have resort to the European Court of Human Rights. Although we hope that he will, and that if he does, then um, the case will be stopped at that stage, and that the UK will. Um, honor the decision of the European, European Court of Human Rights, but obviously um, it's looking like the UK government just wants to withdraw from every international uh, um, safeguard and go its own way into a very uh, dangerous place. I would like to ask you if apart from uh, the very important support from the Mexican president. Is there any other major support you received recently? Well, Julian is a, a symbol of um, democracy and anti-imperialism in many countries. So Latin American countries um, right now that are supportive of Julian are Argentina, Mexico, um, and, and a few others and uh, we're waiting to see the results of the Brazilian election as well because as you may know Lula uh, da Silva has expressed how Julian should win the Nobel Prize, the Nobel Peace Prize um, and uh, so there's incredible support around the world. Uh, the persecution, political persecution of Julian is well understood all over the world. Julian is the foremost political prison, uh, prisoner in the world right now. He is being punished and persecuted because he did his job as a journalist and he is being uh, punished because he revealed uh, war crimes and criminality by the superpower. Can you actually tell us if there has been uh, some sort of uh, raise into the people consciousness about this case? Absolutely, there has been progressive awareness over the over time, and I think that's not just the success of the campaigns, which um, are incredibly important. Um, it is both those campaigns that uh, have grown and grown, and people have become uh, informed about the case because uh, the facts of the case of the persecution itself they speak for themselves. So it's really about breaking through uh, to informing people properly about what Julian is being uh, charged for, which is the, the 
um, documents about the Iraq and Afghan wars, torture in Guantanamo Bay, and so on. Um, but I think it's also because the average person is basically a witness to this monumental injustice that they understand that you can't p keep a person in prison for years on end indefinitely uh, who is not serving a prison se sentence. This is arbitrary detention in its purest form. It is persecution in its most uh, primary expression. And uh, the average person who has a sense of justice uh, and of fairness can see that what is being do to done to Julian is cruel, inhumane, and torturous treatment. And regarding this last topic that you brought forward, it's very important for us to understand the human part of the story. I would like to know, when was the last time you could see your husband, your children could see your husband, you, can see, you could see each other, and how's his health right now? Well, Julian's health is deteriorating by the day because that is what prison does to you. Uh, he's in a, a single prison cell in the United Kingdom. Um, in that prison, they have uh, prisoners in their cells for over 20 hours a day. Uh, so the isolation is extremely difficult for him, and obviously he's not getting the, the uh, type of physical um, movement that he needs in order to stay healthy. And he's fighting an enormous fight um, from, from that environment, so it takes a huge toll on him, and the, the sheer injustice of it is would would be extremely difficult for any person to uh, deal with. Uh, but Julian's incredibly strong, and he's um, energized, and he knows there's a lot of support around the world. So he's energized by the fact that people are mobilizing. Um, they're mobilizing all over the world. Uh, tomorrow there will be a, a bunch of actions um, in many countries and then on the 15th of October here in Italy um, and in other parts of the world there will also be uh, actions for, for Julian's freedom. And it's important to keep the pressure up, to raise the pressure so that Julian's case is truly understood for what it is, a political case a political um, persecution, not a legal process, because it's an abuse of the law in order to persecute a person. Um, so Julian's, you know, he's incredibly um, grateful for everything that uh, people all over the world, the gestures, you know, big and small, uh, that people do in order to fight for his freedom in different ways and there is no action that is too small um, and you know uh, there's also a lot of linking up and connecting um, people who, who support uh, Julian they're linking up and there's there's strength and resilience and the um, in, in that action um, and it is the uh, you know, the ongoing fight that people will fight as long as Julian isn't free. Um, it's that message that is incredibly important to keep growing uh, until he's free. And exactly because of that, we will never stop uh, trying to obviously speak about the case. And uh, next week, we are going to do a 24 hours uh, live uh, interview to all the people that are going to speak about the case. And uh, along with President and my colleagues, which are here with me today, and uh, is there anything else we can do to actually bring forward to the attention of everybody what's going on and uh, what is your last, uh, your very last uh, hope uh, this period to bring forward justice into this case? Well, Julian has stood up for people around the world, and now people around the world have to stand up for him in order to free him, and that's what it will take in order to free him. Uh, the uh, 15th, the marathon, 24 hours uh, to free Julian is incredibly important uh, in order to integrate and consolidate support. And we have to keep these actions up, and people need to be um, more and more involved and uh, follow uh, what's happening in the case, follow me, um, buy Niels Meltzer's book, 
uh, by Stefania Maurizzi's book. Um, they are incredibly detailed de um, deconstructions of the persecution against Julian, and uh, they they show how um, what's being done to Julian is uh, criminal, and it is uh, you know the criminals who are who are inflicting the damage on the innocent person who stood up for democracy. Thank you so much, Stella.